have a look at this. I'm carefully scraping the capping off this drone cell and pulling out the pupa. This one's got one, two, three foundress mites. And then here you can see the juveniles and they've been feeding on this drone pupa as it develops. The only place they breed is right here under the capping. This is the Varroa factory, if you like, and understanding this helps you know how and when to take action. To many people, Varroa mites can be a daunting thing to come to grips with, but beekeepers all around the world have been managing Varroa successfully for decades. And with a bit of learning and extra care, your bees should do fine. At any time, around 80% of the mites in your hive are hiding under the capping. So generally, you won't see them on the adult bees unless the level of Varroa is getting extremely high. In our observation hive with a high mite load, we could clearly see the Varroa mites on the bees. And they're often hiding under the platelets like this one. It only takes one female mite to start an infestation in your colony. So it's important to monitor your bees regularly. We'll take a dive into monitoring in another video. And we also have videos on easy treatments and mechanical methods that you can use to keep mite numbers down. As well as that, we'll have info on integrated pest management strategies and breeding for Varroa resistant genetics. When Varroa arrived in Australia in 2022, beekeepers began experiencing the build-up phase that typically happens as Varroa spreads across the landscape. During this period, which may last for a couple of years, hives can more rapidly become reinfested. Any way in which bees interact with each other is an opportunity for the mites to spread. And this includes bees foraging or drifting to other hives and robbing, as well as beekeepers moving hives and equipment. If your bees rob honey from a weakened colony, they can bring back a huge amount of mites to your hive. And as lots of unmanaged colonies will be dying out in this build-up phase, it's necessary for beekeepers to monitor more frequently and lend their bees an extra helping hand. In countries where Varroa has been established for years, Varroa levels are much more stable and beekeepers may only need to treat for mites a couple of times per year. The Asian honeybee Apis serrana is the original host for Varroa, but the mite managed to jump species and was first identified on our European honeybee Apis mellifera in the early 1950s. The Asian honeybee evolved together with Varroa and was able to develop many strategies to deal with the parasite over millions of years. In terms of evolution, 70 years isn't much time for our European honeybees to develop natural genetic resistance to this novel threat. This is why as beekeepers, we need to give our bees some extra support. Varroa mites are about the size of a sesame seed and look like a little tick. It's a parasitic mite that lives on both the developing larvae and the adult bees. They feed primarily on the bee's fat body tissue, which is their equivalent to a liver. As a result, Varroa has an impact on both the individual bee and the colony as a whole. For individual bees, this includes things such as reduced lifespan, lower weight and poor immunity. And for the colony as a whole, Varroa significantly reduces the honey and pollen production, as well as the quality and quantity of brood rearing. The colony's immunity is then greatly reduced, making them far more susceptible to other pests, diseases and deadly viruses, such as deformed wing virus. And typically what we're seeing in our area at the moment is Varroa weakening hives that aren't managed well and then small hive beetles get hold and finish them off. When a Varroa infestation is left unchecked, it can be the end of that colony. Understanding the Varroa life cycle is super helpful in managing the mites in order to keep your hive healthy and thriving. The mites life cycle consists of two phases. One is living and feeding on the adult bee and the other is the reproductive phase. So Varroa breed right inside the capped brood cells. So if I uncap this drone pupa and pull it out, looking up close, you can see the Varroa mites. This one here is the female that entered the drone cell just before it was capped. This is commonly referred to as the foundress mite. And a number of foundress mites can enter a single cell. Here is a pupa with five foundress mites. So what happens right underneath the capping of the brood is that the female foundress mites feed on the fat body of the developing pupa by creating a feeding hole 
that they all share, and then they start laying eggs. If the foundress mite hasn't previously mated, it can actually mate with its own son, but usually it's already mated with its brother in the cell it emerged from. Despicable, right? The first egg is laid about 60 hours after the brood cell is capped, and it will always be a male. The following eggs will always become female mites, with one egg laid about every 30 hours. Here is the male, it kind of looks like a little spider. And here is a juvenile female mite. And this one is likely the foundress mite that originally jumped in the cell just before it was capped. During the breeding cycle, underneath the cell capping, a single foundress can lay up to five eggs, depending on whether the cell contains a worker or a drone bee. Varroa much prefer to breed in drone cells. This is because of the longer time that the drones take to pupate under the capping, and this allows for an extra mite or two to mature and mate before emerging. So at times when there is a lot of drone brood in your hive, this is when the mite load will increase a lot quicker. The telltale sign that mites have been in the cell is their faeces, which is deposited on the cell's top edge. The mites use this pile of poo to orientate themselves around the cell, and they also mate on top of it. Once hatched and mated, the new females will mate with their male brother, or a brother from another mother, if there are other foundresses in the same cell. When the bee is ready to emerge from the cell, the male mite and any immature females are left behind to die, while the mature females hitch a ride with the newly emerged bee. At this point, they can jump to other bees and will feed on the bees as they ride, often hiding between her abdominal segments. When mites are feeding on the adult bees, this is sometimes referred to as the phoretic phase and usually lasts around five to 11 days in between reproductive cycles. During this time, mites have a chance to spread between colonies. The mite will then jump back into a cell just before it's capped in order to lay eggs. And the cycle starts all over again. Female Varroa are typically able to complete three to four reproductive cycles in their lifetime, which means mite populations can grow exponentially over a short time span. And another thing to consider is the more brood there is in your colony, the quicker the mites can breed up, and especially if there's a lot of drone brood. Mites can survive away from their host for at least five days. And in cold climates, they can even survive long frozen winters by living and feeding on the adult bees. And these mites are ready to start breeding again in spring when the bees begin to lay brood once more. So let's go through some important things to remember as we help our bees with Varroa. The Varroa life cycle has two phases, one underneath the capping of the brood cells and one out on the bees. Mites will enter worker brood cells, but much prefer drone brood cells. 80% of the mites in your colony are underneath the capping of the brood at all times. And if you're seeing mites on the adult bees, this means the infestation in your hive is really high. We can't eliminate Varroa once it's in our hives, so keeping them at a low level is the goal. How you choose to manage the mites will depend on factors such as how much time you put into it, your budget, the local climate, and whether you want to avoid using synthetic chemicals or not. Since Varroa's arrival in Australia, beekeepers initially experienced a build-up phase, meaning that mite numbers can quickly spike and the chance of reinfestation after treatment is high. If there are both small hive beetles and Varroa in your area, you'll have to watch out for the double whammy effect, where the Varroa weakens the hive and the hive beetles finish it off. To many people, Varroa mites can be a daunting thing to come to grips with, but beekeepers all around the world have been managing Varroa successfully for decades. And with a bit of learning and extra care, your bees should do fine. Have a look at our other videos to learn about easy management techniques you can use to keep your bees thriving. Mm -hmm.